Okay, so do you want to tell people why your brain is like a box of frogs that's been run over by a truck and I have been absolutely dreading each and every interaction with you for the last while? Yeah, so it's been a... I feel, I was thinking about this the other day, okay, right? I feel like we need to change the name of the show to The Harris Had a Shitty Week Show. <laughs> I was literally every single episode starts with so how's your week been and then it's like me going on a rant tirade of all the shit things that are going on all the um, insurmountable problems that you seem to struggle upon i actually used the word insurmountable in my email to one of my lecturers so okay you're bang on there so yeah um we talked last week i think about college and how things are just kicking off everything's so super crazy and yeah uh, it's it's just like a, a huge tsunami of work all coming, you know, to a, coming to a head at the exact same time at the end of the semester. So last week I was coming up to the, the very final week of semester two before the exams were due. And there was, I think I mentioned last week, loads, loads of deliverables that needed to be done. Um, and unfortunately on the Monday of the last week, I had to go to my doctors. Um, we had moved from direct care from my psychiatrist to shared care, which is a, a thing in Ireland where they do half care with your GP and half care with your uh, psychiatrist. So you essentially only have to go to your psychiatrist like once a year or once every six months instead of, you know, much more regularly. Um, yeah, for me, it's once had, every six months. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we had agreed on my last meeting with my psychiatrist that we would do that. Got an email or a text from the uh, the GP to say, look, you need to come in for a, a checkup, blah, blah, blah. So we organized a BP, 24-hour BP monitor, which I'd never had. I didn't find it, you know, too annoying. Everybody was saying it's going to be a pain in the ass, you know. You're not going to like it. It goes off every half an hour and wakes you up all through the night, but I found it okay. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, it's basically a box that's attached to you with a blood pressure cuff attached to your arm. And yeah, it it gives regular blood pressure readings. It's a halter monitor, it's called. Yeah, so it's it basically goes off every half hour. And then when you're, I think, 11 o'clock is switched over to every hour. Um, but yeah, it wasn't too bad, except for when I was writing my reports and stuff or trying to code. And then every half an hour, you're like, oh, shit, that's another half an hour gone. <laughs> it's almost like a, you know, a countdown clock. Beep, beep, uh, where... because, yeah, it's like, oh, no. That's another half an hour gone out of the time I have left to get these things finished. So it's almost like someone's, you know, standing behind you with a whip. Get get it, get it done. You're, you're losing time. But yeah, that happened on Monday. So it was really productive on Monday, even with the cuff. Uh, and got a really good bit of work done on one of the major project deliverables. Then Tuesday comes around up to the doctor in the morning uh, to see how things are going. And got the, you know, just absolutely heart-wrenching uh, news that my BP was too high to continue on my meds and that I essentially had to come off them immediately. Now, I hadn't taken them yet on Tuesday morning because I take them kind of more towards the late morning. Um, so I didn't even have any of me at that stage. But yeah, he's, he's essentially saying there's too high a risk of cardiac problems if you don't come off your meds immediately and don't take them. Um and then four weeks time, come back, we'll do another BP monitor for 24 hours and see how it is and go from there. Um, okay. And I was uh, legit near, near tears when he said that, like, you know, you can't yeah. just clear me away because the stress, the stress and pressure of trying to get everything done is enough on its own without now basically being told you don't have the one thing that actually helps you to get all these things done anymore and you just have to do it on your own which you've struggled with your whole life and actually have kind of an a b test of a master's you've tried to do before and failed at because of the adhd and because of the struggles of being able to focus for assignments and stuff like that so it was a very rough 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 tuesday um had a lot of support from friends and you and uh family and stuff like that but yeah it was very very awful time on tuesday so i'm, ba I'm basically yeah like you said my brain is all over the place 
I can't keep a thought. I can't keep even like conversations alive or memory alive. Um, like we were talking about just before we popped on, there was a few things you were literally telling me as, as we turned on this call. And two seconds later, I had completely, you know, forgotten about it. Yeah, so, yeah. That, that conversation we'll come back to. But first of all, let's kind of dig into what you were talking about there. So first of all, your blood pressure was too high. Now, you're on Ritalin, which is, uh, or as it's chemically known as methylphenidate, um, which is known for uh, raising blood pressure. So yeah. this is a common technique if you're on Ritalin and if they check your blood pressure and they see that it is raised, the first thing they'll do is eliminate that potential causer and reassess. So first of all, did they say what your reading was, what your, what the, the spikes were that were concerning? Yeah. Let me now try I'm you to remember that. I know. Yeah. But I do, I do have it in there somewhere because he gave me the sheet and I looked at it before I went into the, so we went into the nurse to yeah. get the thing kind of scanned off and the data and she gave me the sheet with all the info. And then I went into the doctor afterwards. So <clears throat> I think it was like 140 or 150 something okay. over, I want to say 90 something. Yeah. And then it dropped by like 20 points uh, overnight. Um, so so it went I don't to know 120 like over 80, that kind of thing overnight. Some, yeah, like 114 or 120 over uh, 76 or something like that. Yeah. So that sounds like the 140 over 90, that would be considered hypertensive, which means high blood pressure. Hashtag not medical advice. Not medical advice. Um, this is just general information. It's not yeah. medical advice and it's not intended to be any kind of diagnosis or anything like that. But yeah, that would, that would typically signal or imply high blood pressure. Now that by itself isn't a, generally speaking, a concern. Uh, what the fact that it comes down when you're asleep and it goes up and down like that, that's normal. So what they'd want to see is next time you have the halter monitor on, they will probably want to check it to see if it has stabilized. If it has stabilized, they will probably look at alternatives in terms of medication or alternative therapies that will work. If it hasn't stabilized, then that would mean that there's a different issue at play and they'd need to dig into that then. So ultimately, yeah. this is a good thing. Um, no, look, I, after all the stress of Tuesday, I came out of the office at like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the evening. And I just had a thought to myself, like as much pain and worry and stress as it's caused the guy could have literally just saved my life you know i could have yeah. been going on for the next week on potentially getting a heart attack or s some sort of serious cardiac problem um yeah. so you know changing the perspective to look at it like that kind of uh made me look at it a little bit differently and think about yeah. everything differently it also opens the door in another way um like it, it gets you to look at alternative coping methods, alternative ways to deal with the symptoms. But before we talk about that, talk about how the week has been for you, because I know that's a general term that I tend to use every week, yeah. but that was last Tuesday. We're now on Tuesday again. Yeah. As you've gone through the week, I'll talk about how it's been dealing with you. And <laughs> that's been like trying to, trying to befriend a feral cat at the best of times. Um, but how has it been for you? Like just dealing with things, first of all, processing, processing exams, processing, yeah. trying to, trying to run a podcast and trying to run a home and a family and all that kind of stuff. Well, how... let's not be under any illusions here. I do not run a home. Right? <laughs> I run a home. Oh yeah. I am. Um, I, I run away. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, I won't even dare to try and take any credit for that. Um, but yeah, the other stuff. So like I say, Tuesday was a crazy day. Um, I, so the news was very difficult. I, I, I said it to him, you know, uh, I said it to, to the doctor when he said it to me, could it be like stress, you know, cause if we've had a very stressful time. Could that be the cause of, you know, an elevated BP? Because I've been on 
the medication for over a year now, different medications, all stimulants. And I've had blood pressure tests and not had any issues with them. Uh, and I've never had any issues with blood pressure in the past. So I was kind of confused as to why it was happening now. And he mentioned, yeah, look, it could be stress, but it doesn't matter because, you know, we have to, we can't take the chance, um, which was fair enough. So my next conversation then was, well, look, does this, for, for me anyway, the answer is yes. But I wanted it from him as, as obviously my, my doctor. Does it constitute extenuating circumstances for things like deferrals for exams and extensions, you know, for assignments and stuff like that? And he said, absolutely. Look, this is a, it's a huge medical uh, change. Um, you know, so whatever you need in terms of uh, medical certs or letters or anything like that, just let me know. He said, I thought he would write something up straight away, but he said, look, colleges usually have forms and stuff, you know, specific to the college. So go back and check what the story is with that and uh, come back to me and let me know. So, yeah, got advice as well from some other friends who are in college and stuff like that. And they said the same. Look, colleges are always on board with trying to help, especially in mental health circumstances, which this definitely was after getting that news. Um, so, yeah, I, I tried to get my head around reaching out to the college for that kind of stuff. And it took a few days um, to, to find the right people and to get in touch with the right people and have those conversations. And then uh, that kind of put me at ease quite a lot. I think it was like Friday by the time I was in touch with them, or by the time they were back in touch with me, Thursday or Friday, to get the uh, the specific forms and stuff like that. And then I was onto the doctor's office to try and get the letter sent over. And I was like, I had things, I had things due for the Sunday and the Monday. Is today Monday? Today's Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. I had things due for There's Sunday life and, example. The, and the the Monday. So I was kind of trying to, I was panic rushing to get everything in before Friday. Um, you know, thinking that if I didn't get it in at time, then I wouldn't be afforded the opportunity to have extensions or stuff like that. So you got all that, all, all that in on Friday, but taking it back anyway, that that's kind of the college side and the, the ferals and stuff like that going back through the days so tuesday i was very productive even though i had no medication i was still kind of in the office for a good you know eight nine ten hours working away um and getting stuff done now i think i explained it to friends as i was probably working at about 80 percent of my usual productivity which is still quite high compared to what i would have been you know before medication and that that was the case for say two days okay yeah what's up it's all right what's up um yeah so i was working at about 80 percent for say tuesday and wednesday and then thursday was like a completely different day altogether i was like a completely different person the fatigue my god it just walloped me in the face uh you know getting out of bed i just wanted to get straight back into bed i had no energy look my body just felt completely drained my mind felt like it hadn't turned on at all. And I really struggled to get anything done. Um, and I struggle now to remember what I actually did on those days. <laughs> um, but uh, the fatigue, it's funny because I used, I used to always say to Rachel, you know, I'm tired all the time. You know, she would come to me and say, I've had such a long day. I'm so tired. And I'd be like, I'm like that all the time. And then, you know, the obvious response from people who don't understand that is, well, you haven't done anything today. You know, you've just had your normal day sitting in the office all day. Um, this is actually home. a very yeah. common misconception about ADHD that they think that people with ADHD have like boundless energy and they're just running around constantly when actually fatigue is more common than hyperactivity. Mm. In, with people with ADHD and you're you're living that right now you're living the that pure burnout feeling yeah and that's the way I was up until the medication and that's where this kind of disconnect in understanding of why is Harvey so tired all the time or why is he saying he's so, he's so tired all the time yeah. when he hasn't done anything um 
but I, I lived that my whole life, you know, especially kind of as I moved on into my 20s, my 30s. Um, the fatigue and just constant, be, constantly being drained, not being able to do a full day of kind of giving my energy to anything at that stage. And that's how I feel now. And it was really eye opening the first couple of days and, you know, the last few days as well to look at my life from the perspective of having been on the medication and having had that pro productivity and that new way of life and then comparing it now to what it was like before. Because, you know, when you go, you go through your life in a certain way, that's your life. You don't know any different. Then the medication comes and you're doing the titration. You're kind of upping your productivity or upping your, um, your, your dosages. And you kind of get to that plateau where everything is perfectly fine. And you've kind of found that sweet spot. But by that stage, you don't have that kind of reflection available anymore because you've gone through the process of changing medication and kind of bit by bit becoming more human and more productive and more yeah. kind of like everybody else. So to be taken off the medication then and be taken away from that uh, new life is it's kind of mind blowing to realize. And it, I hadn't really th thought about it, but now I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, how in the good Jesus did I actually like get through my life? How did I get jobs? How did I, how did I study? How did I pass college? How did I yeah. do any of that the way I'm feeling now? Now, obviously I'm yeah. older now, um, but still like the, the level of fatigue, the level of, uh, you know, just it's brain fog. It's, it's just a, it's the most dense fog you could possibly imagine. Yeah. That's what's in my head right now. I, and that's I have the last few days. I have some theories about that, about why, sorry, a call was coming in. I have some theories about that, about why you feel it more acutely now. And that why you, even though you feel the same way you did before, why it feels more like it feels harder to deal with and harder to process now. And like you, as you said, sorry, another call coming in, um, no, yeah. why it's harder to process now and why it's like, how did I cope with this before? How did I have jobs? How did I like maintain friendships? How did I do all that? Well, and the friendship thing is another story. <laughs> Maintaining <laughs> friendships has never been a strong seal for me. Well, yeah, that, it's kind of a turn of a phrase. And for me, it's, uh, I was just persistent in being your friendship. And I think that's why I was able to break through that, that crusty exterior. But I have theories about that and I'll come to it in a minute because I want to talk to you about like your plans for the next few weeks. But before that, I want to talk about what it's been like for me. <laughs> Yeah, dealing with you as someone who is currently medicated and who, as someone who was currently the same as you with a lot of the similar symptoms that you're talking about with that kind of lack of focus, lack of direction, yeah. lack of energy or memory. And, and Rachel just popped in there a few minutes ago. Maybe we should have kept her around to see what she feels as well. Yeah. How it's gone for her. That but would yeah. be a, yeah, a little surprise guest of uh, let's berate her for a while. But yeah, for me. Dealing with you since Tuesday. So first of all, on Tuesday itself, that was, it was like, empathetically speaking, it was a blow to the gut. It was mm. like, I knew what it would mean for me. So it would, it, it would have crushed me in the same way as it very clearly crushed you. But since then, like, first of all, I tried to give you space because I knew focus was going to be an issue. And if I pulled your focus, because at that point, you weren't, you hadn't made, made any decisions about college or about the assessments. So I was like, I can't really like bother you while you're working on assessments, because as we were both aware at that point, you had two massive assignments that were due at the end of that week. Then when like natural kind of planning conversations came up about the podcast and episodes we were going to do and different things we were going to, uh, going to be working on. And first of all, trying to get you to, to pin you down to a conversation was like trying to pin mist to a wall and it was you were flitting around like like a beautiful delicate little butterfly that i couldn't i need, I need an example because as we've spoke about 
I have no memory of any of this happening. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, have you got any, like, examples to, to oh, tell me what you were like? Uh, yeah, well, I probably do. They're probably not super appropriate for <laughs> for this because there are many, many expletives where I was like, Harv, what the fuck are you doing? Etc. Um, or Jesus Christ, Harv, for fuck's sake, will you listen to what I'm saying? Things like that. If you just scroll back through our chat on WhatsApp, I'm sure you'll see many, many, many examples of things that you haven't replied to. Just <laughs> FYI. Even today, there's been... Uh, Two, two specific examples. Uh, the first one is I've been recording all day some different shorts, some uh, short form videos uh, to put out at different times. And I was like, hey, will you have a look at this to check it? I think I've recorded five or six and I think I sent you three of them. And I know if I ask you right now, have you watched them? Have you watched them? Have I watched what? Oh, for fuck's sake. No, no, I have not watched them. I have, but you see, <laughs> and I'm like that as well, just generally though, you know, because yeah, I, no, I know, when, yeah. when I do get content like that, I want to have time to actually sit down and properly look at it, which is yeah. difficult when there's a, a two and a half year old screaming in your ear um, that you yeah. want to play with a new sandpit. Um, but yeah, no, I will look at them. Uh, no, I, I know you will, but like, that's just the example there of... In four weeks uh, when I get my Ritalin back. Exactly. Um, the other example is when we were planning this episode, because when everything kind of died down about what you were going through and how you're going to process it and what the next steps were and all that kind of stuff, we were like, this is something that we need to talk about because it's something that a lot of people will experience. It's something that a lot of people will, will go through because, as I said, Ritalin or methylphenidate can cause this as a side mm -hmm. effect where there can be raised blood pressure. People will be told they need to come off it, they need to seek alternatives, all that kind of stuff. So we decided, let's actually, when, when I was able to actually get you to sit down and read a message, we decided that we were going to try and put this out there, try and talk about what you were going through and share that. Um, so while we were planning this, Harv said, do you know what? Let's actually do this properly. Let Because we when we approach these, we try and not over plan we try and like make it like just have it conversational like the, a lot of the times when we're talking we haven't prepared anything we're we're sharing stories pretty live and um, for this one it's a little different because her has been gone through something really really tough so we've been uh kind of talking back and forth about this one all week when again i could get him to sit down and actually read a message so we would Harv said earlier on, I want to do this one properly. We need to kind of do this one justice. So I want to put a plan in place where we where we kind of structure what we talk about. This was only, what, less than an hour ago. So I said, okay, great. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good idea. Let's do that. So I was like, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open a doc and we're going to take some notes. We're going to follow a plan and we're going to actually have this be really really structured and it's going to be it's gone it's like diamond it's going to be golden it's going to be amazing so harv what's your plan oh uh i i don't know my plan was that you were going to have a plan <laughs> and look at how look at how just <laughs> on on point and on the ball you are with your explanation of the plan so i was right to delegate that to you it's just unfortunate that i waited until we were starting to delegate it to you. So yeah, the plan was that I would just pull a plan out of my arse. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So well, that's, that's essentially what we've been doing for the last six months. So yeah, that's fair to say. And uh, yeah, no, it's been it's been it's been a really interesting week. But my heart does my heart, my soul, my everything, everything that makes me productive now and remembers what I was like before. Yeah, goes out to you because, like, it it's it's a struggle at the best of time, at the best of times, and I like I developed coping mechanisms all through my life, and like there's coping mechanisms I've been able to let go of. There's been coping mechanisms I still hold on to. So that's something I want to talk uh, talk to you about what what your plan is because I know for me, like when in my twenties. Before I was medicated, 
I kind of self-medicated by kind of going out, meeting men, and ending up with bruised knees of an of an evening. Um, <laughs> that was my my that was my way of dealing with uh, dealing with it and coping. So, what's what are you what are your plans like in terms of how you're going to deal with this, how you're going to cope with this? Because the dust has kind of settled now. This is going to be the way things are for a few weeks. So, what way are you going to approach this? How are you going to deal with it? And it's- like. Go ahead, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's really interesting that you you phrase it that way. Like, what's my plan when we've just clearly (laughs) established that that type of uh, mental gymnastic work is currently unavailable to me? And 404. Yeah, and not even that, but I haven't even thought about it like that. You know, I haven't even considered um, what I'm going to do for the next few weeks. And it's it's an interesting situation because I've submitted all my forms, college forms for assignment extensions and deferrals. You know, my original plan was to still do as much work as I possibly could and try to get them in on time. And if I didn't get them in on time, continue to work on them and uh, submit them as soon as I could. You know, as soon as I had them to a quality where I was happy to submit them, which is tough because in semester one, I did quite well. You know, so my standard of work is quite high. So to be able to get to that standard was already quite high. But uh, yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, complete write-offs, got absolutely nothing done. Um, As much as I wanted to and uh, needed to, got nothing done. So I need to wait now to get information back from the college um, to see what options are available to me. (laughs) <laughs> um, and that's going to kind of determine how I try to structure my thoughts and how I try to go about the next few weeks because the semester's coming to an end you know marks have to be done by a certain amount of time but I think it's mid-May um, so that yeah. kind of gives me two week buffer for getting assignments in but I physically and kind of psychologically I'm not able to do it. Like I'm, I'm, it's almost being like an invisible paralysis. Yeah. I'm not able to do it. Um, well, you feel like you're not able to do it. No, but I, I actually am not able to do it. Um, and I can say that having come from a Tuesday where I was in the office for eight, 10 hours doing stuff, yeah. doing exactly what I needed to do. And then, two days later being completely useless and sitting at the computer and not being able to click the thing I needed to click or type a sentence, you know, it's, it's, it's so strange. You know, we started this podcast. I know I'm going off on bloody tangents and all sorts. We started this podcast medicated. We started as people who had been through the process. We'd been through learning about ourselves and we, got to the other side in terms of we'd overcome a lot of the problems. Obviously we still had problems and we still talk about those things, but we've, we had overcome an awful lot of the issues that brought us to looking for diagnosis. And now the perspective is completely different. It's, I have ADHD and I don't have anything to do. I can't do anything about it. You know, it's, it's, it's a difficult situation. Now, I'm in a lucky position, still being unemployed, where I don't have to worry about work and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and college is coming up to a break, obviously, after the exams. Um, I do have a placement that I need to start. That starts in mid-June or so. Um, so I have a few weeks of play, you know. It's it's not a... Outside of the assignments and the exams, things aren't, you know crazy busy in terms of need and the medication it's really just the college stuff that was that was keeping me um or that i needed uh, the medication for um so yeah i don't have a plan um which probably makes an awful lot of sense but also i probably don't really need a plan because there's two scenarios there's a scenario where they grant me deferrals for the exams and i do them in august that's all fine don't need to worry about it and they grant me some sort of you know exception for the two remaining assignments 
and then I don't have to worry about it. The other situation is I, I still get the deferrals. I don't think of any issue with the deferrals like I've got. Obviously, the doctors know and stuff like that, but it's the assignments because they need to be marked by a certain time. Yeah. There's no remarking uh, available. So essentially, I get the extension up until when they need to be marked and I do my best, whatever I can do, which is probably going to be, you know, other crap and submit that and get a grade that's way below what I would have wanted, what I should have got and live with it like that. But yeah, I think I took a perspective shift, you know, it was the end all and be all. I need to spend all day, every day in the office, get the assignments done, get the studying for the exams done. And then, you know, and talking to friends and you and family and, um, even the people in the college, you know, it kind of put me at ease and I changed my perspective. And right now it's like, if I, if I don't get what I need or what I wanted to get, then that's okay. And that's not the end of the world. And it's just something I'll have to live with. That's a very healthy way to look at it. And as we move through the weeks, we will, uh, I think we'll be talking about how you're coping with things, <clears throat> what, what methods you're using to, uh, kind of keep yourself grounded and how you're wrecking my head, quite yeah. frankly. <laughs> it's funny, right? It, this is the other funny thing. So as all of this was happening, it was Friday. So I got the news on Tuesday and it was Friday before it registered in my brain that I should be sharing this information with the people who are following us. Yeah. You know, I was so kind of, I almost imploded into myself and into my situation that I completely disregarded what we've been building and what we've been working on for the last six months. And it just kind of sprung on me. It was like, this is exactly the kind of, you know, firsthand experience, information, straight from the horse's mouth kind of stuff that people are uh, coming to our channel and coming to our TikTok and our w whatever else we have. They're coming for this kind of information and this kind of, you know, real life lived experience. And I was like, oh, I have to, I have to put out a video. And then I wanted to do it more and more, but I just couldn't do it, you know. And I wanted to do one this morning, and I couldn't do that. And I'll try, I'll try to do more. Um, I need to kind of just be, you know, kind of off the cuff type things. If I want to do, it, I need to just hit play and speak whatever comes into my mind. And uh, that's that's. That's the plan yeah. I have now for the next few weeks, I think. I can assure you that what you're going through, what you're, as you said, when you hit record and when you, when you do feel like you're in a position to get that stuff out, that what you're going through and what you're experiencing and the way you express that, there will be people who will, that will resonate with. And it, it like the, even the way you're talking and even the way you're kind of expressing how, how it feels, it reminds me of how it felt for both of us back at the, the start when hmm. we were looking for this, when we were separately without even knowing that we were going through this and it all feels so insurmountable. And this is this is something we're going to talk about more. And it's, it's something that we're going to look back on and it'll be, I'm sure it'll be a great thing uh, for you eventually, but right now let's just see what we can to help you get through it. And that's actually something I'm going to lean on our listeners for because I currently use main, my main method of, of dealing with things is the medication you're kind of in a position now where you're in a bit of a limbo situation. So yeah. if anyone has any advice, if anyone has any techniques, a lot of people choose a non-medicated route. So what, what do those people do? What techniques do they use? How do they get through the days? How do they eliminate that brain fog? How do they kind of make sure they stay on track that, as you said about the, like the exams, how do they make sure they get through something like that job interviews day yeah. to day? How do they, keep themselves on on track so if and anyone like, has any tips absolutely let us know yeah 100 percent. and it's funny as, as i'm listening to you saying those things like we did those things 
we don't know what they are now because you know it's it's a yeah. past life but we did those things to get through job interviews and exams and big projects and stuff like that so there are things and there there are ways to trick the adhd mind into working the way you want it to um so I'm sure there's plenty of people out there, yeah, who who are still in that position to be using those. And like you say, uh, there are people who choose the non-medicated route. Um, it wasn't something that was working for me um, at the time, but I definitely know a few people who, who, who follow that kind of prescription. So yeah, yeah, let us know if there's any tips or anything like that. Definitely send them to me. Um, comment on the videos or whatever on the TikToks. Let me know. And until then... I'll just be sitting around here acting like the potato that I am. Probably wrecking my head. So yeah, yeah people can reach out to us on our socials. It's uh, typically at ADH Derpcast, uh, pretty much across the board of all the socials. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, give us as much feedback as you can. And please give us some feedback to help Harv because not only for his sake, but for mine because yeah, more so for yours for your sanity it, yeah. it's been it's been an interesting week um but thank you for everything so far thanks everyone for listening so far please feel free to give us any feedback and remember to join the chaos and we're all in this together <laughs>